So this is the waltz from the Dmitry Shostakovich Second String Quartet in A Major, Opus 68, written in 1944. This quartet has been together since their student days um, at the Moscow Conservatory and at the, at the Gnissen Institute. Um, what we're going to talk about, I'm going to uh, really ask them some, some questions about where and 
where they come from, how they got formed as a group, what it means to be a string quartet, and how and what they've seen in terms of the changes. I first went to the Soviet Union uh, in 1966. I was 19. It's hard for you all as students, some of you students, to really understand what it was like to live within a society and a culture that was completely closed. We had no idea as, as a farm boy from Iowa, me, uh, that, that there was what people were even like in 1966 in the Soviet Union. Uh, there was no information being shared. It would be similar to what, if somebody asked you, tell me what you know about Syria, you probably would have to think about it a little bit. It's kind of closed down like that. Um, but it was, in fact, like that. So our opportunity, and I was traveling with the State Department in 1966 to see an example of what life was like was a, a bit of a shock. Um, of course, it was post-Stalin. Um, but it was still a very different world than even now in, in today's today's world. A lot of the students in um, a lot of the students in Moscow were born when you guys were born, so they were born in the 90s. So the 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 whole transformation of the Soviet Union had happened at that t by that time, and there was like, who are these people? The students say. So we're going to talk for a bit. Talk a little bit, let's start, let's start with a little bit about why you do what you do. In other words, where did you come from? Eugenia, start out, because uh, tell, tell me about why are you playing this violin? Uh, I play this violin because my mother played violin, this one, by the way. So I was very lucky to inherit it from her. My mother was very well known violinist in Russia, in, in uh, Soviet Union. She never played abroad. It was Iron Curtain, if you know what is it. So in Soviet Union, it was, she was very well-known soloist. And that's how I got this instrument, because now it's absolutely unreal. You know, it, it just was a long time ago and in a very different country. So your mother was a violinist, and, and your brother is a pianist. You were yes. a violinist. And, um, and your father, what, what did your father he, do? He was, my father was a physicist, very well-known physicist, not only in Soviet Union. Uh, he was a nuclear physicist. He was founder of a big uh, physics institute in Moscow. But he was, he, he liked very much classical music and he had a friends between musicians and between composers. Actually, he was a friend of Shostakovich and I knew composer, so I was a school girl, but I remember how he came to our <coughs> house and I remember him very good. So you said something last night when we were talking about this that, that, they, that you would have converse, they would have conversations. Now, understand that her father was in fact one of the developers of, the, of a physics institute, uh, Armenian by birth, uh, mm -hmm. and in fact uh, one of the developers of, of, if you will, the bomb, uh, and was very connected to some of the changes that Stalin wanted to have happen. You talked a little bit last night about a couple things, and I've known you from before, that you remember as a child knowing in, your, in the room where your, your uh, playroom was that the mics were there, that there were mics in the walls yeah, at all it was, it was mics in our house, in, even in a children's room. And we knew about it, we knew. And if something wrong was with uh, telephone line, the person who come to, uh, to, uh, to make it up uh, never finished his work if somebody from our family was in a, in a room. And, and you also said that, that he kept a suitcase packed by the door. Suitcase. A suitcase. Your father kept a suitcase packed in case he would have to. Uh, that was in the 30s. My father mm -hmm. was originally from 
Leningrad. Now it's Saint Petersburg. It's you know return old name of city. And those time in Soviet Union it was Leningrad. And in uh, 36, uh, it's actually started everything early. But in 36, 37, 38, it starts huge terror, which Stalin uh, did. And uh, Leningrad probably was the city who suffered even probably more than Moscow, even more. It was something awful there. And uh, not only my father, my grandfather too. And many people, you know, they usually expect that somebody will come for them for arrest in a, during the night. It was like one one o'clock in the morning, two o'clock in the morning, they uh, have suitcase with everything what needs to take with you going to the prison. So they were ready for it. And Shostakovich was very much uh, between these people because his life was completely in danger and he, for decades, he felt like hostage in the Soviet Union because Stalin played a game with him. Uh, all his friends and his supporters were in prison or shot. And Shostakovich was expecting that it will be the same with him because it was huge articles in the main newspaper Pravda, in main newspaper in Soviet Union about his music. He is uh, in the 36 already his opera Lady Macbeth was prohibited to play. And it was continuing, you know, all time. He, he could earn money for his family only uh, writing music for movie. That was his only possibility to survive. And Stalin, he took very big attention to the movies which was done in the uh, Soviet Union. And he liked this <laughs> music which Shostakovich wrote for uh, movies. And that's probably was one chance for him to survive. And also, you know, to this time, Shostakovich was very, very famous in all world. Because starting from his first <coughs> symphony, which he wrote when he was 19 years old, his first symphony was already performed everywhere in the world. In the United States, Toscanini did it, Kusevitsky did it, and uh, in Europe, Klemperer and Bruno Walter uh, performed it. So he uh, got his fame very early. And Stalin tried to make it, of course it was hypocrisy, he tried to make up that Shostakovich became like official Soviet composer. And it was really absolutely not like that. Because his music even was prohibited in Soviet Union for a long time. Till the 44 or 45, 1944 or 45, when Stalin sent him to the United States. So represent art in, uh, in the Soviet Union. And so of course it was absolutely hi hypocrisy. You know, it was all a lie, but officially it looks like that. And Shostakovich felt awful about it. And that was his suffer, you know, all his life. That, that was awful. And uh, to the end of his life, he was very, you know, he, he was very lonely. You know, he had a family, that, uh, but he was not a social person. Uh, he didn't like to go to concerts when uh, was his premiere, you know, of some of his uh, uh, pieces, he didn't like to go to the stage.